how's it going guys and gals um, I wanted to put out a quick video regarding some of the automation stuff um, not necessarily a next step but I've gotten some feedback a few times about actually showing like kind of a walkthrough so what you see on the screen is like an example or kind of part of what I would use is like a resolver worker so you have a list of subdomains and you want to try and resolve them to see which ones are actually live or not um, as you can kind of see here from from status codes that I look for and stuff the code doesn't really matter again I, I, I'm using go um, and it's really basic and I'm definitely not good at it but whatever you use is fine my example uses go you can use whatever you want it'll just look a little bit different but I wanted to show an actual example of like how I'm deploying this kind of stuff when I talk about dockerizing automation and why it's better and why it's easier and, and stuff like that at least in my opinion of course but the first thing is again this is just like a super simple I have a few libraries I made here and whatnot but it's super simple basically all it does is send some discords uh, messages to my server that it's gonna start um, runs two checks on two different tables of subdomains that I have prints out a duration and, and again I think part of these will print to the screen any new domains that get resolved real simple stuff doesn't really matter the code doesn't really matter what does matter is I make this Docker file to go with it. This one, sorry. I make this Docker file to go with it. So this is what will actually Dockerize it um, going forward. I use DigitalOcean to do it because I want to put it in the cloud, but you can use this anywhere. You can use like Google Cloud, um, Linode, like anything you want to. I'd maybe avoid AWS because I think they have rules against like pen testing and stuff on their network um, or from their stuff. But this is really simple. All we're basically doing is you're saying like from the Golang Alpine image, that's gonna be our builder image. Because in Golang, you can build things into a binary and then just use the binary. You don't need like Python and that kind of stuff. You don't need the extra stuff from the library, the compiler or anything like that with it to run it. It just turns it into a runnable binary, especially on Linux, it's super easy. So I have an Alpine Golang image as a builder. I'm adding Git so I can pull code if I need it down the road. Um, some of my other images use it, some of it don't. I just add it in just so they're all really similar in my head. I make a working directory just because it's easier. Copy dot to dot, which means I'm copying everything in the uh, everything recursively from the directory that the doc file's in into my working directory because it's just a dot. And then I'm running go build, which just builds it into a binary. I really don't even care what the binary is because it's the only binary on this docker. So I just call it hello here, for instance. And then since it's a multi-stage build, stage two will just complete the final environment. And it just uses a, a straight Alpine Linux distribution. It's not even the Golang one anymore. It's just a very small, very lightweight uh, Linux image. And I put some stuff on there that I might need. Again, make a working directory, copy in my resolvers that I might need. And then again, f I copy from the builder image the app slash bin slash hello, which is my working directory, and then bin hello, where I built the object from my go build. I take that hello binary and put it into user local bin on the new Alpine image. So now I have a little baby Linux image, very small, very lightweight, with just one binary on it that I need to run, and then do command hello, which just runs the, uh, the worker, okay? Which again, will run main.go because it's Golang and whatnot. So I'm basically just, your basic Docker file, and all I do is I have one built here, and I go into um, the resolver worker here, but again, what it would actually look like, I built, I have two built right now, I keep bringing them up and down while I work on them and, and build new ones and whatever, but basically what you would do is it would look like, as you would go over here, uh, I pull mine from GitHub, it can be from really whatever, you can build it yourself into an image and try and push it to the registry if you wanna do that too, um, or Docker Hub or whatever, I just pull it uh, right from my GitHub. So you select a repository, I have a few other ones here, but subdomain worker, resolver worker, so I pick this one, branches, whatever, auto deploy or not, that's up to you, you go to the next. Um, again, it's gonna see two things, because it sees my code. It's trying to decide, like, do you wanna build from the Docker file, or do you just wanna build right from like Golang as a web service? So I'm gonna delete this one and use just the Docker file. I'll edit it. And I don't need it to be a web service. It explains a web service as an always running service that is internet accessible. I don't need it to be that. I need it to be a worker, which just runs in the background and it's not internet accessible. So that's fine with me. 
Uh, when I save it, it'll take away the HTTP port and all those options and just give me a run command. If you need one, great. If you don't, which I don't, because I have it in my Docker file to just run right away on build. So I don't need a run command after the build. If you would rather do it there, you can. Um, so that's good. You name it, you know, resolver worker demo. Demo, if I can type. There we go. Um, I'm going to go back. Right here, you can edit the plan. So this is how you can decide, like, oh, what size of a, of a VPS you need it on and that kind of thing. And it tells you your monthly cost. So you can do, you know, 20, you can do five, whatever you want. Um, you can also scale your containers here if you want to. You can either do that in the Docker file or you can do it here. So you can decide how many containers you want. You can go back. Uh, so once you have it all figured out how you want to deploy it, next, you can do environment variables, which I would need for mine. Again, if you have like database credentials, you want to be environment variables, uh, Redis key, whatever it may be, um, put it in there any environment variables you need, you would press next, you can change the region if you want to, et cetera, et cetera. And then you press review and stuff would come up. You can review all your stuff, obviously, and it will tell you what your monthly cost around should be. And you'll click create resources. I'm not going to, because again, I would have to put in environment variables and I'm not going to do that on the stream. And I already have one going, an instance of it going, so there's not really a point. Um, but basically what that's going to do is I can show it to you what it looks like once it's running. So if I go into here, uh, it you know you can see it once it's up and running, it shows me available, it hasn't died, it's using 70% of the RAM I gave it and 78% of the CPU, great. My monthly cost for this little one, this is just a test worker that I'm using to test changes. So I only have the really, really, really tiny one that's five bucks a month. Um, but you can see some of the activity on it, uh, some of the insights on it from what I did with it you know, CPU usage over time, memory usage over time, whatever. So you can see if you need to scale up or scale down. Um, you can see runtime logs, if it will load, I'm assuming. So this is it like actively working, doing stuff for me. So this is basically what you would see if you ran it locally and put it on a screen, which I think is really cool. So I can see it actually doing its thing right now and it's finding apparently a bunch of Shopify stuff. Um, cool. And then obviously settings. But this is basically, and again, I, I guess I can pull this up too. This is basically like my uh, little Discord channel that I have, and it would, you know, print out something like this that comes from my workers. So it, you know, starting and a newest version and domains resolved, and it just puts out a bunch. Um, and the thing with this is, is when it's done, it will just run, you know, it'll build. When you deploy it, it'll build as a worker and it'll run. But the best part is when it's done, if you didn't tell it to wait or go once a day or whatever, it will just run again. So it will run continuously over and over and over and it doesn't need to rebuild because it will check if there's new builds, there's not. If there is, great, it will redeploy the new builds and especially if you have it set to that auto deploy, any changes you make to the code base will automatically redeploy the worker. It'll kill the old one, redeploy the worker. So it's really nice to have auto deploy in my personal opinion if you're doing it this way. Um, and it'll basically run over and over. So when this one is done, it will spit out my stuff to Discord. It'll check for rebuild, doesn't need to rebuild, and it'll just kick it off with the same command again. And it'll start running again. You can change that and say, hey, only run this many times a day or week, month, year, whatever, just like normal jobs. But if you don't set anything, it'll just run over and over and over and over again. And again, this one does cost me about, if I just left this for a whole month and just sat on it, let it run, it would cost me about five bucks a month to basically constantly go through my databases and try and resolve every domain I've ever found over and over all month long, nonstop, whether I'm asleep or awake and send results to my discord server. So my opinion, pretty cheap. Um, again, it's a new month, so it shows my estimated cost is zero. I think for the testing I've done and stuff like that and building out like basic automation that just does like some subdomains, some resolving, some like, uh, you know, checking for ports and then like checking for open web services, just like purely recon stuff uh, with a database that's managed through DigitalOcean to shove all the data in is like maybe 25 bucks a month or something like that. It's, it's really, really cheap. Um, and again, it will get more than that when I scale it up and try and actually use it like at full scale. Um, but this makes it super easy to test. I mean, if I run it all month, it's five bucks, but if I run it for like a day to see what happens um, and see what it finds, it's you know, not five bucks, it's much, much less, right? So 
you don't just get charged five bucks a second you spin it up once so that's kind of all i really wanted to go over i want to just do something really short and sweet i guess it ended up being about 10 minutes um but let me know if you still have any questions this is just kind of a short demo um if there's stuff you like more in-depth stuff you guys still want to see about particular parts of it we'll break it down even further but i wanted to get a demo out there so people kind of understood a very simple way to write some code in my opinion golang or what i'm using is golang create a docker file for it go to DigitalOcean or any other provider use that docker file to deploy it as just a background worker or whatever you know this you know cloud provider calls it and just get something running in the background on the cloud doing recon for you for the cheap so that's all i got today guys thanks peace